Hey guys, my name is Shy. Welcome to another Yes or No Pick a Card reading. You got piles 1 to 5 and 6 to 10. Go ahead and pick your card. Okay, pile 1. Justice. I was actually just thinking about justice, and this card is coming up all the time in these Yes or No readings. So, My sense on this is that whether this is a yes or a no, whether this is good or bad for you is entirely comes down to how excited you are to see this card. If you feel like you've been taken advantage of or that things just aren't going your way or that you've been putting in a lot more work than somebody else or just whatever it is, if you feel like you've been putting out more energy than you've been getting, then this is a really good sign. This is the scales are balancing and all that is going to be coming back to you. This would be a yes for that. If you're kind of got a little nervous when you saw justice because maybe you've been getting away with something, maybe you've been hiding something, maybe you can just tell that somebody else has been putting in more energy than you, then this is the scales are balancing, but um, not particularly in your favor. That would be a no for you. So you'll have to feel into this. Just know that the scales are balancing out. Everything is going to be even once this process finishes. Pile number two. Knight of Wands. This is a yes. This is somebody charging out to manifest their destiny. The Knight of Wands has a lot of power and a lot of just strength and courage and perseverance and magic. He rides out with his magic wand, with his magic staff to create his ideal world. And there's a lot of speaking here. I'm actually feeling something in my throat. So this is connected to your throat chakra for a lot of you. If you are trying to take blocks out of your throat chakra, or if you're just trying to get more comfortable speaking your truth or being confident, this is a really good sign. This is a yes, and it is all about going out and doing. So if you were asking about going out and doing something, here is your sign. Get to it. This is a yes. Pile number three. Oh, what do we have here? <laughs> the eight of swords in reverse. I thought all these cards were upright, so I'm not quite sure how this one flipped itself around in the in the box, but here we go. This is a no. When the Eight of Swords is in reverse, I feel like you are not freeing yourself. You are blocking yourself. So let me just talk about it up, upright as a card for people who aren't familiar with the Eight of Swords. This is all about your mental constructs, your own perceptions, your own beliefs, your own mind blocking you and entrapping you. You feel trapped but the trap is actually of your own making. Nobody else has trapped you. Nobody else is really stopping you. It is all you. I mean, you might see a cage around you. You might feel like somebody put you in the cage, but really the cage is a projection of your own mental mess. Just, you know, um, and everybody gets like this. Everybody gets like this. So don't, don't, you know, beat yourself up about it. Like I always say, but just understand that that cage around you is not as strong as you think it is and it wasn't really put there by anybody other than yourself and with it in reverse this means that you are not you're really stuck in that you're really not getting out of it so the eight of swords would normally be about okay now now you're starting to see that the cage is of your own making now you're starting to see the chinks in the in the mortar in the wall and you can break out of it but in reverse that process is being stopped so just to be clear this it this is a no this is you are really, really stuck. You are really, really stuck in your own mental constructs, in your own mental paradigm, and in your own uh, fears, doubts, insecurities, and feelings of worthlessness or helplessness and victimization. You guys are really, really, really stuck in this pocket of entrapment. And I know... That's not what anybody wants to hear. And I know this sounds really negative. And I mean, it is negative for now. But of course, with any of these energies, with anything I can pull up out of these cards, nothing here is forever. There is never any trap that you're stuck in forever. So this card comes up as a, 
in reverse is a really, really strong reminder that all you need to do is identify your limiting belief systems, identify the thoughts, the feelings, the emotions, the perceptions that is holding you back, that is keeping you trapped. What are you doing to keep yourself trapped? You, I mean, and some of you have really very real obstacles in your physical environment and really very real challenges with other people. And that's not to say that those things don't exist, but always there is something in our own energy that is keeping us in that situation. And if you can't deliberately and, you know, consciously go out and change a person, you can't change a person. So if they're keeping you trapped, there's nothing you can do about them. You can't really change them. And if you have, you know, a literal concrete wall around that, well, I mean, you could get a sledgehammer and start banging, but you know, that's maybe not the best way to go about doing that. There's something about how can you shift your own energy, your own perceptions, your own inner world first, and then you'll start to see your outer world reflect that. So um, this is a no, but you guys, this is really an invitation to do some inner work and to shift your inner belief so that you can get out of this self-entrapment. Card number four, three of swords. This is a no. This is a card of heartbreak. It, can you guys hear my cat? <laughs> he is he is not happy about this either. Look, it's literally a cat getting stabbed in the heart and my cat is meowing away back there. So anyway, <laughs> you guys know the three of swords is about heartbreak. It is about pain and suffering. Okay, I have to let my cat out of the room. One sec. Okay, we are now cat free. I could easily edit that out and just start this this pile over again, this card over again, but I'm not going to because I think my cat, his name is Bear. He's one of my cats. He's black and fluffy and he is 17 years old <laughs> and he is very uh, picky and determined to get his way. So he was unhappy to be trapped in this room with me and he wanted out. He wanted to get out and he made himself known. He made himself understood. He was going to stand behind me, pacing in circles, meowing and meowing and meowing until I listened to him, until he got his way. And now he's out there and now he's happy. So especially since I'm using this Grimalkin tarot deck, this CAD deck, I think that is actually the message for you guys. You are feeling stuck in heartbreak, <laughs> you're feeling, you know, like you're bleeding out here, but you just need to express yourself. I think you, I think you need to express yourself and then the door will open for you and you will be set free. L literally, like literally what my cat just experienced in microcosm, you guys can experience on a higher level. So whatever is causing you this heartache, this heartbreak, this pain, um, you need to just speak up about it. Speak up, speak out, let yourself be heard, like unburden your heart, free, free your heart. If something is weighing your heart down and making your heart feel, you know, stabbed, you need to talk, <laughs> you need to talk about it and express yourself about it. So the overall energy of this card is a no, but in order to get past this heartbreak energy, the general message here is to speak. You need to communicate, let yourself be heard, and then you can shift out of this. Card number five. Ooh, the lovers. There we go, guys. The lovers is always a yes. I love the black cat and the white cat, and they're connected at the heart. We have this leonine angel up above down below wisdom these cats they're not just in love they are part of a cosmic duality they are part of you know they are the yin yang here they are two opposite poles that are coming together in harmony so if you're asking about your love life this is a very clear answer in any kind of positive direction that you're looking for. But if you were asking about your spirituality or your any kind of personal journey, even your career, anything about your personal growth, 
and evolution. This is wonderful because this is also the card of alchemy where you are harmonizing opposites. You know, you are finding the middle ground between two extremes and without losing the strengths of either side. You know, this isn't coming to a compromise because when we compromise, we tend to lose. Sometimes we lose the strengths of both sides. We end up in this muddy middle ground, kind of like suburbia. I always think suburbia is the worst kind of compromise because you're not getting the best of both worlds. You know, in suburbia, you don't get the best of the city and the best of living out in the in like a rural environment right you don't you don't get the best of the city and the best of the forest or the best of the wilderness you get the worst of both <laughs> that's i grew up in the suburbs and that is really my impression of that so this is not that this is harmonizing everything in such a way that you actually get to keep the best parts of both so it is this is a transcendent energy, guys. This this lover's card goes way beyond just romance, and it is it is a big deal. It is about harmonizing polarities, and yes, yes, awesome. Card number six. Okay, the tower. <laughs> Do you, you guys see this? This cat come in like a wrecking ball. <laughs> so that's what, what is about to hit you, guys. Welcome to your tower moment. This card, I don't even give a yes or no for it. I mean, it is a no, so I guess I'm going to contradict myself there and I will give you a no, but it is beyond that. This is your tower moment. This is <laughs> something significant in your life is about to clear out. You know, this could be suddenly having to move. This could be going through a surprise breakup or finally a breakup that you've been trying to manifest for a long time and finally here it is. This could be changing jobs suddenly. Um, but don't panic because for it's not going to be a major, you know, mundane level trauma for all of you. For some of you, this is like clearing out of a mental paradigm that is holding you back, you know, an emotional paradigm, like emotional baggage, karmic patterns, your soul cycles, your mental paradigms. So, you know, giving up a belief system and it doesn't, that doesn't have to be a religious thing. We have belief systems about, you know, the economy and about social structures, all kinds of mundane stuff. So it can be something like that. And for me, honestly, guys, the tower card is usually an internal thing. I've had, have had it come up when I've gone through major um, physical reality shifts, but really I think with this wrecking ball, especially the way this card is depicted with this wrecking ball, something is going to, you're going to like notice something about the world and it is going to literally shift your paradigm. You know, for a few days, you might be like, what, what, what kind of stuck like a broken record going, what is going on? What is this? What is going on? How can this, how can this be? <laughs> like imagine somebody who never believed in aliens and then literally saw an alien, like a, an experience of seeing a UFO that is so was so experientially true for them that there was no way they could write it off as a hallucination or, um, you know, a plane or something like that, something like that. So be prepared to shift. And the, the more you guys can lean into this tower moment, the more you can just go, okay, my tower moment is here. I need to shift my paradigms. The more you can just roll with that and accept it, the easier this will go for you. If you try to resist it, if you try to build up walls, this wrecking ball will keep smashing into you until you until you accept it and shift paradigms. Just remember that, you know, your higher self is bringing this in for you to help you evolve and grow. This isn't a punishment. This isn't to destroy your life. Once you get through this, once the dust settles, once this tower is demolished by this wrecking ball, you can build your utopia afterwards. So this will be worth it in the long run. Card number seven. Oh shit, the high priestess. Wow, look at this eye. Look at this eye beaming out. You guys, this, this is a yes, this is beautiful. And do not underestimate the high priestess coming out. I can't think of her ever coming out in a yes or no before. Maybe, maybe once but I can't remember it. She, she does not come out for no reason. This is 
one of the most spiritual cards in the deck. This is a spiritual awakening. This is you realizing your full potential. And it is also, this card does not come out unless you have already done a ton of inner work. You guys have been walking your your spiritual paths. And even if you're thinking, oh, I'm not really walking a spiritual path. Well, your, your path of personal development, even if that's been through school or career or building your finances or running your home, that is part of your spiritual path. You know, you don't need to segregate spirituality into like a little spiritual box. You've been on your path of personal development and the high priestess is here to say like, wow, <laughs> good job. You did it. Here you are. But also that was just the beginning. It is time to level up to the next level. Your guys' third eye is opening. You are, you know, opening your psychic perception. You are seeing, you're lifting the veil and seeing a whole new layers of reality and of the cosmos. For a lot of you, if you've been wondering about your past lives, um, if you've ever been a witch or if you've ever been any kind of spiritual leader, if you're a light worker, if you're a star seed, any of those questions asking about, have you lived in Lemuria? You know, a yes for that. A yes, a very, very strong, strong yes. This is connecting to divine feminine power and magic and psychic ability and your unconscious. And it is also a sign for you to step up into a leadership role. If you're asking, should you embark on some kind of leadership role? I mean, to repeat myself, <laughs> sorry guys, um, or start some kind of spiritual business or some kind of creative project very, very strong yes, that you were meant for this. This is part of your soul's blueprint, part of your life's journey, part of your purpose here. Beautiful. Yes. Card number eight. Ooh, the Knight of Cups. This is a yes. This is somebody bringing you a message of love. This does not have to be romantic. But for me, the Knight of Cups actually always represents my mother. I always get it on the day when I go home to see her. Uh, I live like, you know, a day's drive away. So I always pull a card before I start the drive. And sure enough, it's the Knight of Cups. So this is somebody sending you love. This could be a passed on loved one. This could be disembodied spirits who are sending you their love. This could be absolutely a romantic partner if you think the knight of cups is also uh lancelot if you guys are into arthurian legends lancelot is the knight of cups so this is a lot of passion a lot of love stemming right from the heart as you can see this cat is actually we can see its heart its heart is bare so this could also be a message for you to for you to be that message of love if you are <laughs> if you're secretly crushing on somebody and you came to ask you know should you spill the beans should you express your heart should you tell that person that you like them yeah absolutely this is wear your heart on your sleeve tell them how you feel um you know this energy can be going both ways but this is a card of love moving around messages of love being sent and received yeah and i think that's that's what I have to say about that. <laughs> so um, have fun with this one, guys. That is a, a beautiful message. Card number nine. Ooh, the eight of pentacles. If you guys are asking about your career or any kind of skill you have been learning, this is a wonderful, beautiful yes. Um, it's a yes for everything, but particularly anything about building your skills, building your finances, building your career or your education. And anything that is like a long term, you can even get this card for, for love if it is, but if it's coming up for something like that, this is about planning for the future. It is about long term trajectories and building a solid, solid foundation over the long term. This is somebody who's been putting in a lot of work. You have reached a new level of mastery. You know, for example, um, just to use the metaphor of somebody going to university, right? when you start university in your first year, you know, you'd be like the ace of pentacles or the page of pentacles. And as you go through, you know, you go through the three of pentacles when you're just starting to build your skills and get a grip of on it. And then when you're maybe in your third year, you are finally at the eight of pentacles. You're not quite at 
Ten of Pentacles or King of Pentacles, but you are definitely a solid foundation. You have definite usable skills you have knowledge to share with people and you have such a good foundation um and from here all there is is to just reach that final level of complete mastery so it is yeah you're like a third a third year university student or somebody just starting their fourth year right you're you're just about at the finish line and all your hard work has been paying off don't doubt your skills with this one guys card number 10 Ooh, the two of wands. Are you building building something with somebody? Uh, this particular two of wands actually has three cats in it and a crow. And you can see these wands are propping up the world. You guys are manifesting something. I don't usually feel this way with other two of wands, but with this particular card, I feel like you have been putting in a lot of energy and passion and effort along with somebody else. This could be, you know, your romantic partner or really good friend or a business partner, but it's literally culminating with this world. You know, you, you have each been using a wand, you've been each using your staff and channeling all of your energy to create this new world for yourself. This is a really good sign that whatever you've been doing is finally starting to take shape. You, you know, you can see this new world starting to be born. And from here on in, guys, it's just keep doing what you're doing. This is, you know, you've finally gotten that first spark. You're finally seeing the very first stages of your project or your your goal start to manifest. From here, just, just keep doing. It's going to start as a snowball. So keep going with this one. I think that's the message here. Keep going with it. This is You're off to a really fantastic start, and you have all kinds of potential to keep growing and expanding, and it's all onwards and upwards from here. So I think that's it. Thank you so much for tuning in, guys. Hope to see you again soon. Bye.